Patriot on me. Welcome to the Saturday morning wake-up call. It is technically hour one of Patriot's Lament. For the next couple of hours, we are going to be trying to stir the metaphorical pot, perhaps uh, taking a stick to the nearest hornet's nest, whatever we need to do to get your blood flowing and your mind working. Rattle it up. We want you to think <laughs> for yourself and not just do what you're told. I, mean, that's, <sighs> I know. I, you better. I better watch what I say, Josh. That's right, Steve. Because you know what? The First Amendment. Full that, force that, in effect right now. That that protects me <laughs> to to say whatever I want to say, right? Yep, that's right. That that, that First Amendment, because we all know the Bill of Rights, that has stopped so many bullets over the years. Just like so many other pieces of paper, they, it's just like this magical power. As long as I rub it on myself in the morning, I become invincible. Because wow. of the Bill of Rights. Didn't you know that? I didn't know that because I haven't done that. I'm going to start doing yeah, that. Yeah, you though. just take the, take the Bill of Rights right here. I've got a, uh, I've got a copy. It's Can not you pass just it over? A, it's, yeah, it's the, it's the entire Constitution right there. Right? Yeah, under your arms. and your, No, you keep going. Wipe further down. Oh. Yeah, yeah, because right there, that's what people have been doing. Yep, there with we go. With the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. No, and it's not just been in the last four years. They've been doing that for the last hundred years. The Bill of Rights is meaningless. Yeah, and we. We were talking before the show how we've heard over this last week, the last two weeks or whatever, maybe last month. Well, most of our lives. We have to protect the Second Amendment because if we and right now it's ratcheted up. If we don't protect that Second Amendment now, you can kiss the rest of the Bill of Rights goodbye. And we were talking about what a joke that is. The Bill of Rights have been goodbyed for a long stinking time. And when we get Frank Turner reminds us every week. All week long on your show, the Bill of Rights is shot. There's no Fourth Amendment rights or Fifth Amendment rights. It, well, most people Patriot don't even know what's in the Fourth Amendment or the Fifth Amendment. They couldn't say. Oh well, I, Aaron, can you can you say what's in the Fourth? I Amendment? I know it's in the Second Amendment because that's the only amendment that really that's the one that defends the rest of them, right? <laughs> so that's the only one we need to know. Why are you all popping and I trying think to get that. your? Is it that the button? Yeah. All right. Speak again, Aaron. Now we're gone. No, you're gone. I had to unplug you. <laughs> yeah, I can hear myself popping. Oh, huh. good. I All guess right. you just have to be quiet. <laughs> well, it, it, and if the Bill of Rights is gone, if, if if we do not have any constitutional defense, it, I mean, that was what our what the founders were so afraid of when they were debating the Constitution in the first place, is that we have this framework right now that we are setting up that is going to allow tyranny. We have replaced one tyrant with another. Well, and part of the problem is that uh, we don't understand that the Bill of Rights is nothing anyways. We've turned into a people that think that the Bill of Rights is, gave us those rights or this Constitution. And yeah, it's something that. that grants us liberties. I have a Second Amendment right. No, you, no, you don't. You have the right to defend yourself. I have four... Uh, yeah, as soon as you think that a piece of paper gives you those rights, then all they have to do is simply take the piece of paper away. Well, uh, well even then, what what good is a piece of paper if you aren't willing to speak up? You do not have the freedom of speech. If you are too afraid to let your opinion or your beliefs be known, then you really do not have the right to free speech. And you can say that about every single one of those supposed rights. Can't you? Yep. All of them. Yeah, it's just too bad. That, and, you know, even the Second Amendment, when they talk about that, it was shot down back in, what, 34? When was the uh, National Firearms Act? That oh, was back in the 30s. That was in the 80s. No, there was one back in the 30s with... Uh, when they got rid of the because of Al Capone, machine guns. They yeah. had to get rid of the... It wasn't until... Tommy guns. It wasn't until 1980. Up until 1984, you could buy a Tommy gun. Well, Aaron, I'm going to have to prove you wrong here. Oh, no, my gosh. <laughs> Anyways, here we go. They, even if they you did, go with the they 80s. They did do some uh, gun control, but I can't remember what it was. Well, and pe- people, have, people, have lied, they, people have lain down on every single one of these issues because it's always all of this legislation is always introduced with this pretense that it's to protect the public. We can't have criminals running around out there with these machine guns. We're going to make them illegal, because as we all know, if you make a law against something, the criminal's going to stop doing it. 
Well, I guess the the real crux of the whole thing, though, is that uh, Americans just believe that something out there grants them certain liberties, gives them rights, that none of them are inherent in themselves or reserved to the individual. They're they're given to them by government. I mean, that's, that's basically what you're saying when you're trying to claim uh, an amendment or a, a constitutional right rather than knowing it's yours anyway. Well, I, the Second Amendment gives me that right. Yeah, I've heard that a million times in the last week. <clears throat> sure. We have the right under the Second Amendment. No, it has nothing to do with the, the piece of paper. All that was doing was codifying, putting on a piece of paper that these are already our rights but as human beings. Wasn't the whole point of it to remind those in government, you're not supposed to make a law that restricts people's rights in this area, this area, or this area, because there are some people who think that it is their right to tell other people what to do. They think that they have the right to restrict your rights. I mean, you look at even just the very aspect of how it's illegal for a felon to own firearms. And everybody just nods their head. They, oh, yeah, of course. Well, it goes... Make sense, take away their rights. Yeah, it kind of goes to uh, something I was har- harping on. I don't know if I talked about it here. The the whole thing where you listen to... If you listen to radio stations, shows, national shows especially, or just talking to people... They get all upset about how the federal government's talking about taking away the, your rights and the rights of law-abiding citizens. I hate that term. That's so. That's such a setup. You think about it. I mean, it's a state set up by the state because you're, well, you law-abiding citizens. Why they're going to take away the rights of law-abiding citizens? Well, if they make guns illegal, you're no longer a law-abiding citizen. <clears throat> So is it just for, quote-unquote, law-abiding citizens, especially when you think, well, who who determines what a law-abiding citizen is? Those who make up the laws. <laughs> exactly. So, and we already know that none of us are law-abiding citizens because every American goes through, what, three felonies a day? Commits three felonies a day, one way or the other? So there's no such thing as a law-abiding citizen. So I think it's just a dangerous game to play to even talk about those words law abiding because all they have to do is say well okay well now this is what it means to be law abiding so we're going to take these people's guns now it's going to be these people they're also talking about stripping away rights the gun rights of soldiers i was telling my buddy butch about this yesterday who have signed up or anything with uh that had post-traumatic stress syndrome disorder right that's part of these bills that they're trying to pass through to take, not just restrict their own, strict that they could buy them, but to take them away, take away their ownership rights. If they already have guns, they want to take them back because they have post-traumatic stress syndrome, and that's the new thing is the uh, mental illnesses. So and I know lots of people that have signed up for that because they needed the help or whatever. Right. Well, that's just signing away your... Well, you think about it, though. If we, as the the, the people... If we, the the members of this community, decide that it's okay for somebody to come in and take away the guns of people who have mental illness, who defines the mental illness? Right. In the Soviet Union, if you criticized the state, if you criticized the Soviet government, you were declared mentally ill. Yeah, the Soviets used that big time. Mental illness was a great weapon of the state. In our state. And obviously you have to be mentally ill state. to question what the government is doing. I just said ours. I can't believe it. Yeah, you're right. The NFA was in the 1930s. The Oh, right. I know that the just, 80s when they was made, when they really clamped down like on the machine guns. Well, they, they uh, made it. You had to tax and register. You had to pay a tax uh, to keep your machine gun, and you had to register, have it... Uh, Put it into a national registry in the 1930s, and I think in 1980, in the 1984s, when they stopped the manufacture of any new machine guns, couldn't make any more. Right, and then the or gun, import. And then you have the Gun Control Act of 1968, uh, signed by President Lyndon Johnson, and that's when uh, they stopped. They used the um, Interstate Commerce Clause to stop 
dealer um, making it so only dealers could buy across state lines and uh, to start registering all guns or not registering all guns but doing the background checks and uh, <laughs> setting up the FFL holders to be the people to purchase and sell guns. Really, that was in '64. Sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. Wow. So, and then we had the assault weapons ban in 1994. So when we're just now waking up and saying we have to protect blah, blah, blah. Why didn't we have to protect it back then? The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Unless the government decides to three or four times. Over the course of whatever. Yeah, it's already been shot. As soon as they took away anything... Infring- I'm going to look up that word. You're going to look up the word infringement? Yep. Actively break the terms, infringe a copyright. Whoops. Act so as to limit or undermine, encroach on, infringe on property. To transgress or exceed the limits, violate, encroach. That's what it means. Encroach. To encroach upon in, in any way that violates law or the rights of another. So all those firearm acts encroached at the very least so they're unconstitutional which means they should not be law and yet people but technically aren't it. they constitutional because the supreme court said they were mm-hmm. well we gave congress the right, right to, to create, create law. law they're supposed to be the uh, three branches that whatever but we've pointed out how that's pretty hard to do when the three branches are part of the same state and it's deciding on whether or not it can grow to lose lose and also and still I unfortunately still hear people today say well in four years we have got to get rid of Obama and get someone good in there of course we could have changed gun control in Alaska if the jurors in Shaver Cox trial would have thrown out all the firearms uh all the firearms charges. Yep, would have been done. Well, even the state of Alaska dropped the charges because the evidence was gathered illegally. Sure, right, because according Patriot to state not a, yeah. not a state law. Wasn't that... I know, I'm just throwing this out there. That was passed by Bush, right? No, oh, the, the, the Patriot Act? Yeah. No. What? Obama. He, no, no, it was Bush. <laughs> Bush signed it. No, Obama created that. Did he? Yes. Oh. I've learned recently that Obama did everything. Well, wait. That's bad. He's the one that released the bubonic plague back in the 1300s, I'm too. sure he did. Was he really? He was. It was all Obama. I don't doubt it. I, I sent you a story, Aaron, the other day about Bill Fulton. Yeah. How he comes out. The now. sad panda? Yeah. Sad panda comes out and says that he's a, was always a leftist, liberal, right? And he was just undercover right-wing conservative when he was with Joe Miller's campaign and stuff, which I would think that... The admission that he did there, because he says that he was trying to undermine him while he worked for him, I'd sue his butt off. If anyone knows Joe Miller, sue this guy. Anyways, so wait, sue, sue Fulton or sue Miller? Sue Fulton. Joe Miller yeah, should sue, sue him. Fulton. Sue his I butt think. off. But anyway, so which all that's all that is horse crap anyway. Yeah, of course. I knew I knew Bill for years and years as a really good friend, and. He was borderline right-wing nut. You go into his crawl space, which I'm probably the only person I know that's ever been in his crawl space, but there was more guns and food stored up under there. That wasn't all smoke and mirrors just to to do what? To put, to make me trust him? That's right. just stupidity. And he would always talk about, um, I know right there towards the end, before the whole thing happened with Schaefer Cox, he was talking to me quite a bit about how when everything shakes out, because he believed that there was going to be this big shakeout. When everything shakes out, the, the state ultimately was going to come out on top. And I honestly think that um, he figured, because he thinks about himself first, he always has, always will. I think that that was his motivation right there. He wanted to make sure he was on the winning team. Huh. So, And he still wants to make sure that that's seal, a sealed deal. So he'll say anything to make sure that he's... A, Total status. Right. Basically. If people don't know, he was the undercover, one of the informants in the Schaefer Cox trial case, the whole whatever. So he comes out and says that he's liberal now. So and I don't know, I even remember how I found the story, but I it's in the Huffington Post. Okay. Yeah, and uh, it's actually there's a link to it today. On Joe Miller. In Anchorage Daily News. If you go to the Anchorage Daily News, ADN.com, there's a link in the newsreader section to that article that you're talking about in the Huffington Post. 
If I saw an email on Ron Paul, whatever, then it had a link to it on uh, Joe Miller's website. So that's where I went to look at it. So I read the story. He says that he's a lefty, blah, blah, blah. This is the guy who's working for the FBI. So here's the comments. This is what I thought really, I thought, yeah, we're not making any difference. This, we're wasting our time. Because here in the comment section is, liberals abandon all sense of fairness and equity. They're willing to lie, cheat, and steal their way to an election. The ends justify the means. This is Saul Alinsky, hat tip. Thug, what a good, hey, the guy's a liberal. The jerk is, so on on, liberals like to masquerade as conservatives. Sounds like Obama he speaks, but his actions, that's another thing altogether. Well, that's the left for you. They pay some jerk to undermine the competition and then forget why they paid him to start with. Sounds like this dude's a little disgruntled. Perhaps we need... I mean, so my point is there's 32 comments on here. Two of them are mine, but 30 of them <laughs> talk about nothing but the fact that he's a liberal. Well, that sounds like a liberal, blah, blah, blah. Well, the liberal, blah, blah, blah. So I started thinking about that. I wonder how many of these people are wear little FBI hats. I mean, the problem isn't whether he's a liberal or conservative. The problem is that he was a he's sneak for the FBI. He's a status. Right. That's what the problem is. And so these people just don't get it. The whole thing is, when are we going to get a good Republican in? Oh, people that call themselves Republicans by name. So I wrote in there, and I said the issue isn't about whether he's a righty or a lefty, because there's no difference hardly anymore. What? The issue is that he works for the FBI, and he's a piece of crap who works for a lying piece of crap agency. How many of you Republicans love the FBI? Mm-hmm. That was the problem with the guy, not whether he was a... So I guess sure, if I, he would have came out and said that he was a Republican, they would have went, oh, well, I guess he wasn't that bad of a snitch. Sure. <laughs> one of the one of the funniest things about it to me was he... Uh, he like he was. I mean, it's obvious he likes to inflate his own ego. And he talked when he was interviewed. He basically, in a roundabout way, made it sound like he'd been working for the FBI for like 10, 15 years. Which and he is still such is. a joke. Such a joke. He still is too. His business is booming. Mm, I don't know how informant businesses work once people know that you're an informant, but. So oh, you just move somewhere. He's ultimately not the person that got Schaefer in trouble anyway. In, in a right, sense, but my it, point was that, that these people, no, I get if what they call him a liberal, is. so, oh, well, now that's why he's bad. He's a liberal. What? That has nothing to do with it. I think you're onto something there, Josh, because now aren't all of us technically informants? If you oh, know if you know about right. somebody doing something wrong or planning to do something wrong and you don't inform the government... You can be charged. You're the felon. Do I need to tell everybody about what you're planning, Steve? Uh, do you know what I'm planning? Yeah. Aren't you planning on jogging today? You know what? I am. Aha! Oh, no. no. Is that wrong? Don't, don't it know. is when you have a bomb vest strapped to you. Oh, well, that would be true. That would be wrong. But you know what? I, that would be so wrong. That you wouldn't do it. I... If you think about it, though, if people buy into the fact that there is this supreme authority called the state... And the state tells us we must re- we must report on the activities of our neighbors. We must, or else we ourselves are criminals. How many people will joyfully do that? I mean, you think about even what's going on right now How here in the borough. How many people already do that? Exactly, yeah. with the with the wood smoke issue. Or they call people up that they somebody goes speeding by them, and they, then they speed up to get their license plate. <laughs> I've had the cops come to my house three times in the last uh, two years. Somebody called called them on me. I haven't. <coughs> you live on base. Oh yeah. So thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, appreciate that. So yeah. we <laughs> what? we're I'm just, we're trying to point out a few things here. Right off the bat was the Second Amendment. Okay, it's already been trashed on. And I say if we don't protect it, the other ones are gone. The other ones have been shot a long time ago with the Patriot Act, the National Defense Authorization Act, which was reinstituted. And by the way, when we were talking about the post-traumatic stress syndrome or disorder, I guess it is, that is in the National Defense Authorization Act of 2013 to strip 
the rights to strip away gun, guns from any military veteran who has post-traumatic stress disorder. They've diagnosed almost every damn one of them with that. That's because almost uh-huh. every single one of them has it. You, you go and you send somebody into a war zone, or even a, in a place that was a war zone, and you have to drive through minefields or whatever else, it's going to mess your head up. And, and you're going to wake up with the cold sweats, and you're going to have flashbacks, and you're going to have all these things that are consistent with post-traumatic stress disorder, because they are. The, the reason why people are getting diagnosed is because they have it. So should they be disarmed? No more than anybody else in this society should be disarmed. Because I know several people that are quite capable of handling their life, but they have some problems with what happened in the last 10 years to them. And the National Defense Authorization Act of 2013 authorizes taking away their weapons. Chuck Schumer was... There was one Republican, Coburn, I think. Is Coburn a Republican? One Republican tried to pull it out, and he got slammed. And Schumer really came out and just said, what kind of idiot are you? Look what just happened. This whole thing is about mental disorders and blah, blah, blah. And then he equated soldiers with felons. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, if you think about it, well, they it, are it, once they're not in active duty anymore because they're no longer owned by the state. So they may as well just be felons like everybody else. That makes sense. He said that people with post traumatic soldiers with post traumatic stress disorder, he's grateful for what they did. But once they have that, they're no different than a felon. They should not own a weapon. That's exactly what he said. So that's your state that you go off and fight for. And do their bidding. Then you come back, they crap on you. I mean, they, we know that. They've done that with Vietnam. But that is in law now. National Authorization Act, or NDAA of 2013. If you if you think about it, they, the state, the government, has been doing that since the very beginning. Look at what happened with <laughs> look at what happened with the, the, the veterans of the colonial wars, the Revolutionary War veterans. They got paid well. Oh, no, they didn't. Oh, and they they got crapped on. We always read the wrong history. And when they and when they went <laughs> and when they went to go and get the pay that was deserved that that they had earned that they had that was due them, what happened to them? The soldiers that were still in put the smack down on exactly. them. Exactly. Who was president? Wasn't it like uh, must have been the I king? Think it was no, George? It was the very first one. It was the very king first George president. Washington. That was the oh. one. Oh. Mm-hmm. So he used federal troops against American soldiers? No. Oh. Veterans. They oh. weren't American soldiers anymore. Right. They were as good as felons. Well, that's true. American people, I meant. Mm. Wow, that. No, 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 no. Think, take, take this away for just a second. Well, I there, thought there the Constitution be, you couldn't use. They had the. You did, they didn't need to be paid. They had the reward of, of having fighting for something served, so honorable. Served Caesar. That's true. There, if you think about it, there might be somebody listening right now who is not a veteran, who has not had PTSD, who has not been diagnosed, who's thinking to themselves, well, that makes perfectly good sense that they should take the guns away from someone who is mentally unstable. Because you know what? Once you start going down that way, what if they decide that your personal beliefs, whether you are a Christian or a Jew or maybe you're a Republican, what if they decide that that is a mental illness? Didn't Obama already kind of say that when he talked about the crazies that cling to their Bibles? Their guns and their Bibles. Yeah. So that sounds like a mental disorder to me. Well, and, and it seem, it, we've already got the precedent now where if the government decides that you are mentally ill, then you are mentally ill. And right. they, have the, they have not only the right but the duty to come in and take away any way that you might have of defending yourself or your family against any further indiscretions on their part. I'm, you know, that, that, that's just exciting news. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, it's great. I feel safer already. When are you turning your guns in? Oh. Uh, if, if people could see the glare that I'm giving, Josh, I just burned right Holes through right in my forehead. Right through your head, all the way out into the green room out there. You look tired, Aaron. Cold, dead Not fingers. <laughs> 458 Talk is the number. We've got a couple of lines on hold already. Oh, Sweet. You can also jump in the chat room if you'd like to sound off at KFAR660.com. Be sure to listen to us online. And if you've got a smartphone, you can find us there with the free TuneIn Radio app. Check it out. And welcome back to Nottingham. This is uh, hour one of the Patriots Lament. We call it the Saturday morning wake-up call, of course. I'm Steve Floyd, the man with the face made for radio, kind of the 
chimpanzee behind the button board over here. The <laughs> the real folks with a message are joining me across the uh, the council from me from Far North Tactical. We've got Aaron Bennett. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Steve. And from Bighorn Enterprises, we've got uh, Joshua Bennett. Good morning. Good John. morning. Let's hit those callers. Four five eight talk Amazing. is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Good morning. This is Hillbilly. How nope. you doing? Hey, good. I've got several little points on my <laughs> note. Been taking notes this morning. Oh no. First off, according to Webster's 1828, infringe has the same root as the word fringe, and so it means even to touch the border of my rights. And they certainly have done that. They've crossed our border over and over again. They have transgressed our boundary over and over again. Secondly, uh, if you realize that the Espionage Act has never been overturned, I've counted probably a dozen felonies on your program so far this morning. I quit counting at around 10 or 12, because almost everything you guys say on here is contrary to the Espionage Act, and you could be put in prison for or, this. Or the Alien Sedition Act. Yeah, either, either Wasn't one. Wasn't that overturned? I don't know, was it? I never read anywhere that it was. Anyway, the main thing I wanted to bring up, if I can, is the the idea, if you remember, Israel in 1967 in the Six-Day War affirmed the right of the preemptive strike. So, I don't know if you believe in it or not, but if you believe in the right of the preemptive strike, you do not have to wait for them to come and get your guns. It is only necessary that you be convinced that they are indeed doing so. That when you can admit to your own selves that it's no longer merely a possibility, but an obvious campaign, they are coming to get our guns, then I would recommend everyone out there, at the risk of committing another felony, felon out there, do whatever you would do when they come and get your guns. In other words, if you're going to wait till they knock on your door, but you really are going to shoot them in the head, well, why wait? So I recommend everyone meditate deeply, particularly Christians, because I talk to Christians mainly, and say, what would I do if they came to get my guns? And then put up or shut up. What do you think? Oh, that's good. That's really good. Unless you want to deny the right of preemptive strike, in which case we need to take Israel and call them all uh, war criminals, right? Another thought I had. Nobody seems to want to do what I do, which is to carry open, and I will continue to carry open, and even in the face of the obvious persecution now that they're going to rise against us. It's going to be like smokers. You can hate smokers, and now you can hate people that carry open, even in Alaska. But at any rate, <laughs> at any rate I think we ought to do something, and people don't want to do that. So another thought that I've had, peaceful revolutions quite often choose a color. And if everybody that was a patriot and in favor of gun rights and wasn't going to take it anymore, so to speak, those of us that are mad as hell and not going to take it anymore, if we chose some odd color that nobody wears. Uh, like for, yellow? Like the Gadsden flag? Yeah, whatever. Or a Gadsden flag T-shirt. And if we all just started wearing them in public, even if you won't wear a gun, the key is that's how you start a peaceful revolution. You have to come out of the closet, so to speak, and declare yourself. I do it by carrying guns around. But if you don't want to do that, you know, I advocate carrying guns around. I advocate that we go from carrying a sidearm to carrying a rifle in public. Put it in the basket at Walmart. Just haul it out. But people don't do that. They don't want to go that far. I'm too far out there. So maybe colored shirts would work. Also, of course, I make buttons, and I'll say anything you want on a button if it's not contrary to my conscience. At any rate, any patriot message you want on a button, and I'll give you at least one of them for nothing if you really want to wear a button. I always keep a sack of them. If you see me around, I keep a sack of patriot buttons around. You can take one for free if you've got the guts to wear it. So things like that. we got to do more, though, and I, I advocate everybody do whatever it is you would do the night they come for your guts. Whatever you are determined would be the right thing to do then, do it now. Think about it. Have a great day. Thank you for that. So, there's going to be a lot of people in their backyards. Well, everything's frozen. 
How How's you... everybody supposed to bury everything? <laughs> <laughs> if you wait until they come to get your guns to bury them, you're, it's, it's too late. They can pay me to bring some equipment over and dig a hole for them. Right. Or you could just oh, come and drop your guns off idea. at KFAR Studios, and we'll keep them for you here. Ooh, that's a good idea. Yeah, just, just drop Paid off, storage? Just drop off your you guns. You know, that's yeah. what we need to do. We need to offer a mylar ceiling lifetime storage facility for guns for people. Hide your guns. Hide your guns with Aaron. I like it. For a small fee. This could be some kind of acronym. I'm trying to think of how that would... That's a good idea. <laughs> 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Good morning, I think. Let me pinch myself. Wait, wait. What's your name? Georgie. Georgie, thanks for calling. What's on your mind? Well, I just want to put out a little bit here. don't mean much. But uh, getting to the gun issue, before I go into that, the things that have been stopped here in Alaska that I know since I've been around, one of them is the mining. Uh, We used to be openly go out there and mine all you want and get the dirty water to feed the fish. They claimed I was killing the fish because we were dirtying up the damn mine so much that They took all that away from us. And uh, the poor old miners, they didn't have anything to fight back with because no one had any money. So all this came about so we don't get to go out and dig the trenches and stuff we used to do with a shovel and a pick because no one wanted the shovels and picks. So we're pretty well strapped on the mining now. The next thing that came up was the fishing and the fisheries. When they stopped that for us to go out and fish the way we wanted everything, no one got rich or anything about it. No one wanted our nets. They weren't for sale or anything. They were for sale, but no one wanted them because there was nothing to back it up. So they took all our fishing rights away from us. Now we go to the guns. Everybody's getting rich on guns. Uh, There's nuts out there, and there's guns and ammunition out there. And the reason this comes about all the time is because the people that are manufacturing the guns and all the ammunitions that are being sold, they skyrocket. I think it was in 1994. I used to have 16 guns. But in 94, I sold off, I think, I think six of them, because I could get pretty good money for them. I think some of the rifles I had, I only paid a hundred bucks for. Well, during that time, I was able to sell some of them guns five times as much money as I had into them. Yeah. But there's something going on here. Any time this comes about, the two people on there, I think they used to have guns and stuff in their store. They should have stayed in business just a little bit longer because look at the price of guns that are going. Now you can't even get one. Or you can get them if you advertise uh, the poor the poor people like me. I still have eight of them. And if I get the right price, I'll sell them off too. <laughs> uh, because none of the poor people can afford the ammunition guns that the price that they're going for now. So I had a couple of calls here. They you still got a couple of them rifles? I said, yeah, but he didn't want to offer me enough money. But he'll come back when I can get 800 bucks for one of them. I'm going to sell it. So the gun deal is going to keep on going as long as there's people to buy them. And that's what it's all about. When these nuts go out and kill these young people and kids and everything, it's really sad. But the people that are manufacturing guns and selling ammunition, they're really moving fast. You can't even get ammunition now because they're being sold out. But none of the poor people are buying them. It's all the rich people. They must have a lot of guns and a lot of ammunition. That's all I got to say. (laughs) Thanks, Thanks okay, so for that, Georgie. Actually, I heard the other day where Sports in the Warehouse was limiting people to 100 rounds. No, they changed it to 60 rounds 60. a little bit later in the day. Yeah, we don't recommend selling guns. No, no, <laughs> we don't recommend selling guns. You uh, may not be able to replenish your stock. What Georgie was talking about, um, four years ago I was saying the same thing. That I mean, I actually 
sold almost all of my guns at that time. Actually, I sold everything I freaking had at that time. Every mag and when Obama everything. was first elected. Yeah, when Obama was first elected, everything except for my ammo. And I was advising all of my friends to sell all their guns, sell everything they had, and just buy it again later. And this go around, and my same friends come back to me and asking me, should we sell off everything again? And I'm telling all of them no. And there's a different phenomenon going on now, and it has nothing to do. I agree with Georgie that I don't think the guns are going away. But they're going away for the common person by default. And what I mean by that is you have companies like Ruger. I'll just use them as an, as an example. Ruger, a year before this scare happened, which anybody that knows what's going on knows that there isn't a gun to be had anywhere. And a year before this scare happened, Ruger had stopped taking orders for guns. Now, what makes a capitalist company... Stop taking orders for firearms. Too many orders? Well, they're getting... A lot of those companies get paid in advance by the distributors. And all these firearms come through distributors. It's not like Sportsman's Warehouse orders from the company. I mean, some companies you can do that, but most of them are going through a, a distributor. 99% of guns anybody's ever bought went through a distributor. Well, a lot of those distributors, they pay up front, you know, for those guns. Well, if you're a place like Ruger... Why? How? What could motivate you to possibly stop taking orders? Well, they were over a million firearms behind in their manufacturing there. Well, once you get so far behind and so many orders come in, can you imagine if they were still taking orders today? They would be three million firearms behind. So, so you're the, ol- there, the only reason for a capitalist company to decide to stop making money is when they when the balance reaches the point where you realize that you may not be able to satisfy your orders. You're not, you may not be able to produce enough. Well, Ruger did that before this whole thing happened. Now every single company out there has done that. You have like the manufacturers of magazines like um, Magpul. Uh, I, uh, I talked to them on the phone, called Magpul, because I was so desperate to get mags. My distributors weren't getting them, and that is a company you can order directly from, even though... It's actually cheaper to get them from distributors, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, called them up, and the lady told me that before this scare happened, the magazine uh, scramble came about, they had already moved a year ago to 24-hour-to-day production. And she basically, <coughs> she basically told me that getting a magazine from them, because they're so far ordered out, isn't going to happen. Not necessarily in my lifetime, but basically in my lifetime. So I advise everybody not to sell off their guns and their ammo and their magazines only because the manufacturers aren't going to catch up. It's just not going to happen. They were already so far behind. You may even, not be able to get another one. Even the top the top shelf stuff, I called uh, 12 days after the scare happened. No. Yeah, 12 days after the scare happened, I, call, I called POF. They're a top-tier AR-15 manufacturer, I figured. Well, at least they'll be able to get me one. So I called them, and they said, oh, we stopped taking orders 10 days ago because we'll never fill them all. <laughs> so two days into it, the most expen- one of the most expensive ARs out there, they stopped taking orders. And, they, I mean, that was the best thing that ever happened to them. They've always been a smallish company. So you think they didn't expand? You think they're they're not... Oh, we just got two billion orders. We're going to throw up another shop and throw in a bunch more laves. Of course they did. Of course. and they, But it became so much they realized even with their new facility and their new facility and going to 24 hours a day, they needed to shut off orders. Because so that's never going to happen. They're never going to fill them all. Point being, don't sell off. If you wish to keep... <laughs> if you wish to be armed. <laughs> sure. I, I think it's going to be about as drastic as machine guns there because they... Uh, that's the thing is they, uh, in 1983, uh, Thomas, Thompson submachine gun cost uh, between 180 and 300 dollars, even though they had regulated them, but they were still manufacturing them. And then in 1984, when the NFA Act passed, overnight it was it cost 10,000 dollars. I'm not saying you're never going to see guns again. I'm saying you're going to pay 10,000 dollars for them. He, and if you don't believe that, 
I just bought a whole bunch of AR-15s and had them in my store. I've sold about 20 guns in the last uh, week and a half. And the average gun I sold, I sold for $2,000 a piece. And mainly because of how much I had to pay to get them. And people were walking and weren't even blinking an eye. I sold a... Uh, Over 500 bucks a few years back. A few years back. A year back. A year ago. Four months ago, the oh. Wasser 10, I could still get. I don't care what other guys in town were selling them for. What I could get it for was $420. I just sold one for 1800 bucks. Not because I wanted to gouge the guy. Now, hopefully the guy's not listening, but I paid <laughs> I paid $1,500 for it. I made a $300 profit, sure, but I still paid $1,500 for a gun four months ago I would have paid 420 bucks for. And I can't even find a parts kit now, let alone a complete gun. Parts kits are sold out. There, there's just none left in America. How are they going to build AKs without parts kits? You only had one or two actual manufacturers of AKs. Everybody else built them off kits. And anybody that wasn't building them off kits, they were already a $2,000 gun. Well, now they're five, six, seven thousand dollar gun. So you'll hopefully never, you stocked up a long time ago. Basically you'll never buy an AK ever again. It's not gonna happen. Not unless you pay five, six thousand dollars. So if you hear that Jargi, uh, you're asking too little for that eight hundred dollar gun. Yeah, wait well, a little while you might get eight thousand. Crazy. Yeah, Four, this, five, this eight, isn't like the last go around. Talk. Four five eight eight two five five. That's because they're serious. Back to the gun. Well, they're, they're definitely serial. Good morning, caller, who's this? Good morning. This is Claudio. Claudio, what's on your mind? Hey, uh, I got a, a good name for that uh, storage facility there for the guns. The Freedom Deep. So when they lose their freedom, they can run there and, and get their gun really quick. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, other thing is, uh, I was wondering, you know, people say, oh, our military are heroes and blah, blah, blah. And I have nothing against them, but uh, I mean, I do have against it because they, when they are going to you know, fulfill the oath to the Constitution because when they are fighting for our freedom in Iraq and uh, Afghanistan, you're losing our freedom here. You know, you lost the Fourth Amendment completely when they're fighting for our freedoms outside, and uh, now you're losing our Second Amendment and a whole bunch of the freedoms <laughs> lost here. So I, I was wondering, you know, for the, not for the, like, foot soldier, but the leadership of the military. I think, I don't see them as a hero, but a uh, I don't even tell names, but uh, uh, they're not heroes. I think uh, if they they start to fulfill the old constitution, put their foot and say you are not going to do it, then they are heroes. But right now, uh, you know, they're the ones that probably come to take our guns if that comes to happen. You know, Claudio, they've been drumming out anybody on active duty who has joined the Oath Keepers. The, the people who actually take serious, you know, the Oath Keepers yeah. group, that they say that they are going to uphold that oath that they took to support and defend the Constitution. Anybody who's joined that in active duty, they've been drumming them out. Yeah, and they, and they are considered terrorists, the Oath, the oath Keepers. You know? Well, I'm, I'm not sure at what point they're going to replace the oath to the Constitution with an oath to the president. Well, they already have that. Already do. They, they do. already have that officially. Are yeah. you kidding me? They actually say an oath to the president? Yep. Yeah, they do. And uh, other thing is, uh, uh, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Sorry. Oh, and, uh, smokes. Enlisted. <laughs> enlisted. Yeah, uh, enlisted they, men they, are saying an oath to the president. Yep. Yes, they do. They, uh, I'm, they I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I just my my Haven't mind has been, been officially blown. Like even back when. See when I when know. I was when I was in in the 90s, the oath that we took upon entering the service was an oath. Only to the Constitution to support no, now they to do support the, now and defend they do the Constitution. An oath, all orders given, all lawful orders given by the president. I, I have a little yeah, story but isn't down here. because of the Constitution? Isn't any order he gives lawful? No. Back when I was in, we talked about unlawful orders and that we had a duty not to obey them, no matter who gave an unlawful order. That we still had a duty not to obey an unlawful order. Right, that's supposed to be the uh, difference between Americans military and any other is that they're supposed to their first oath is to supposedly the 10 amendments to the constitution for the people. Their oath is supposed to be the people, the country, not the government. And obviously their own government is not 
loyal to them. I mean, they've proven that since day one, like we talked about earlier in the show. Since day one. I don't know. It's. Uh, I'd like to hear from actual... I don't know if there's any military... Well, maybe... Or uh, police officers in this town. I don't know if any of them listen to this show, but I'd like to hear from their actual mouths what they would do if that order comes around to confiscate weapons. Say our local police here or state troopers, would they do that? Do you honestly think it will come to physical confiscation? Yeah. They really are... They're whacking out this time. I mean, it's not like any time before. They're like, we're going to take the guns. Because what they're talking about is actual registration of everything. Well, they always wait five or six years before they take guns after they register them. No, I don't know. They, I think Josh is Has right. I think there seems to be kind of an accelerant port on this right now. Hey, here's an interesting question. Has there ever been a country that instituted a national registry that didn't take the guns afterwards? No. That's why they register them, so they know where to go. So funny that every single country that's instituted a national registry has promised the people it wasn't to take them, and every one of them has taken them. And every time they believe them... Are you saying the state lies to people? No. Oh. No. I thought you were going down that road. <laughs> Be- until we figure out for sure... 100% if the Alien Sedition Act's been repealed, I'm going to have to go with no. I'm pretty sure... <laughs> no, I think Jefferson... Jefferson was after Adams. I'm pretty sure he got rid of it. Because... I thought it just went away because he got elected. Hmm. Not that uh, they actually did anything with it. I Nobody thought he ever over... relinquishes power, Josh. Not even Jefferson. I'm sorry to tell you. I wouldn't. I... We've already had that battle over him... Uh... Going down and messing with the Barbary Pirates. Oh, that was a battle. No, it wasn't a battle. That was like any of our other battles these days, like with Iraq. Let's see. Four five eight talk is a number if you'd like to participate in the conversation with us today. Four five eight eight two five five. Yeah, it's got a good five. point. Uh, they got to pull it off fast while people still think there's a chance for a future. Yeah, for sure. Everybody knows Obama only has four more years, so... Wait, wait. You know? Does he? Yeah. Now, there is a congressman who's now introduced a measure that would repeal the and which, whatever, whatever amendment it is that says that you only have uh, two terms. That's been introduced. Oh, who cares? I mean, we have more pressing issues than that because uh, the, uh, the fact of the matter is, is that economically we are not going to be around past, um, I don't know, I mean, how, how long does it take for the... The Sedition Act was expired. Oh, so Jefferson didn't get rid of it. No. Ha. It's so amendment, amendment 22, no person shall be elected to the office of the president more than twice, and no person who has held the office for more than two years of a term to which other person should be elected more than once. But Jefferson wrote the Kentucky Resolutions in direct opposition to the Alien Sedition Act. But he didn't get rid of that power. Maybe Mm. it was because he might need to exercise it on his opponents if need be. (laughs) Well, of course. What it's there for. (laughs) 458 Talk is the number if you'd like to participate in the program on the (laughs) No one wants to participate in this. Well, I mean, yeah, they, have, they have to weigh very seriously some of the things that we've said so far today, especially when it comes down to the idea of uh, taking guns or gun rights away from people who have been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder because it is such a high number yeah, I'd like to hear of the what, population. I'd like to hear Randy's take on that, actually. He likes to praise the state. and I'd like to hear anything from any military guy who thinks sure, that would be guys that have signed better. that thing mm-hmm. saying they have post so they can get help. Now they yeah. can get their guns taken away. Well, just calling up and saying it's wrong. Yeah, so what? Or, let's see. Well, what we talked about in the very beginning with uh, law-abiding citizens. Well, what if you're no longer a law-abiding citizen? What a if they take your, your you... lawful behavior today, tomorrow can be unlawful. Right. By the whim of the Congress. What is a law-abiding citizen? The absolute 100% compliance to the state? Mm-hmm. Yes. Patrick Henry never said anything about 
the law-abiding citizen being armed. <clears throat> he just said an armed people, <clears throat> not an armed law-abiding citizenry. That's because it, people aren't claiming their UCC sovereignty, so they're actually oh. not a person. Oh. Oh. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and so until they do... Because they didn't no. say the magic words? No. That's no. No. Uh-uh. No. Ha. If you if you have the That's right... Weird. I mean, okay, take just the basic right to life. If I tell you, Josh... You have to call them persons, not peoples, otherwise they don't have any rights. I found if that out. I, if I tell you I formally waive my right to life to you, and you decided to go ahead and take advantage of that, and you killed me, <laughs> you would not be able to use that as a defense. You would still be guilty of murder. Don't make you me would that st- offer, Steele. I'll be take my chances. You guilty <laughs> of abridging my right to life. Right, you cannot be only because you you can't give up inalienable rights. Yeah, you cannot give up an unalienable right. <laughs> Not even freely. Exactly. Exactly. You cannot give up a right unless the collective takes it. That's totally different. Well, sure. The then collective it's okay. can take it. You can't give it up. And I think the first point that we made this morning where people need to get in their brains. Come on. We have to protect the Second Amendment, otherwise the rest don't mean anything. The rest don't mean anything. The rest already don't mean anything. None of them mean anything. They come in here and they can arrest you without a warrant. They can take you outside of your jurisdiction and put you on trial. That's never happened. That's never happened. Right. Right. They it's happened. Set up a court it just happened the here with Shea. Because that's the one I want to go to. We'll right. see you next hour right here after the Fox News. To Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. It's local talk radio, but we are streaming live online at KFAR660.com. And you can find us on your smartphone by downloading the free app called Tune In Radio. I'm Steve Floyd, the man with the face made for radio. The Basically the trained monkey. I'm here basically. No, I'm, I'm, they give me bananas, I push buttons. It's that simple. Uh, joining me in the studio from Bighorn Enterprises, we have Josh Bennett in here. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. And from Foreign Tactical, we have... Aaron Bennett. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Steve. All right. Um, we have a couple of lines that have already come in on hold, but Josh, you wanted to read something for us? Oh, let's take them then. You want to go to the phones yeah. first? All right. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Red. Red, what's on your mind? Hey, doesn't it in the Bill of Rights say that the government shall not infringe on people's rights? Yeah. And if we got, uh, what is it, uh, the guy got shot with... Uh, the president one time, uh, and they passed a little law, and then they've been infringing ever since then, you know. The Brady Act you're talking about? Yes. And um, this next go-around with the government, they're going to infringe some more if we people don't stand up against it, you know, because this is, you know, this is a joke, you know. Earlier in the program, you had a little statement came out about making uh, dire derogatory remarks, remarks about the government officials, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, not only that, if you're sitting in a bar or a restaurant and you hear somebody say they've got guns for sale that are illegal or something the government wants to hear, and you don't jump up and run into a cop and snitch on them, you're automatically busted for it, you know, for misprison of a felony. Yeah. See something, say something. Yeah. Well. Are you? Are, are, do I hear in in you a, a a a tone of rebellion, Red? Are you are you indicating to us that you do not intend to comply with that law? I won't comply with it at all. What? I didn't hear nothing. I um, my hearing aids weren't working or something or whatever. You know, I didn't hear nothing. You know. I see nothing. Schultz. <laughs> I hear nothing. You know, everyone will comply with what the state wants because we're all the state. Collectively, it'll be forced on you. Red, are you a veteran? No, I'm not. Okay. What do you What do I, you think I, about that idea I, of taking the guns served, away from the veterans? I served a year in Hawaii. Okay. What do you, What do you think about that 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 new proposal to take guns away from veterans? They shouldn't take no guns away from nobody. Exactly. Yeah, never got the right under our uh, Constitution originally 
to bear an arm in defense of this country. Is that right given radical, to us by the Constitution? You read, did the Constitution give us that right? Beg pardon? Did the Constitution give us that right? We got all the rights there is for uh, happiness and liberty and everything, you know, but uh, the government don't have a right to uh, change it any time they feel like it. That's what's going to happen here. I, well, I would I would argue public. that they do though because you're you're saying even now that you have these rights and the government can't change them. Well, sure they can. If you're thinking those rights come from those pieces of paper that were written down, then they were put down in the first place. Why can't they be changed? Mere men wrote those pieces of paper. Mere men can change them, can't they? Or are those things no, natural no, and no, inherent no. to us? That's Not the that's the, the difference. Of the not without the will of the people. Well, right, but the will of the people is how you'll get gun control. Um, That's why I said a few minutes ago, I said, you will comply. Everyone will comply. Because you're right, it's not without the will of the people. Because everything is done by a majority. The state is sanctioned by the majority in everything that it does. Even if it's not the majority, if no one resists, then they have consent. So if they decided tomorrow they were going to take everybody's gun from everybody, I think they could probably get it done, personally. Well, from my cold, damn uh, dead hands, they can have them. Right, and we, we all... That could be arranged. We, we all say that. We all say that. But when the use of force is open to the state, no one resists. No, they because do eventually. They're sanctioned in it. Wait, wait, didn't the Jews resist in Nazi Germany? Eventually, in Poland. In 1940, uh, no, 1938, I believe it was, by the history book I got here, when Hitler got in office, they started taking everybody's guns away from them. We had ended up in World War II then. And the people that, the, that did resist had no guns to resist. Yeah, by th when it's too late then. <laughs> yeah, it's too late then. Hey, that was the whole you. point. Thanks for yeah, thanks for the call. Program. Thanks for the call, thanks. Red. Appreciate John that. John Tretcher and Thomas Gordon wrote the uh, Cato letters. Not it's kind of been destroyed by the Cato Institute. Now they're not what they ought to be. The Cato letters were written pre-revolution after John Locke. All men are born free. Liberty is a gift which they receive from God himself. Nor can they alienate the same by consent. You cannot give up your... Con you cannot give someone the... You cons cannot consent your unalienable God-given exactly. rights. Though possibly they may forfeit them by crimes. The right of the magistrate arises only from the right of the private men to defend themselves, to repel injuries, to punish those who commit them. That right being conveyed by the society to their public representative, he can execute the same no further than the benefit and security of the society requires he should. When he exceeds his commission, he acts, his acts are extra, extrajudicial, as are those of any private officer usurping an unlawful authority. That is, they are void. Every man is answerable for the wrong that he does. A power to do good can never become a warrant for doing evil. I'm looking at a story right here, Josh, where uh, the president has just signed a bill on Friday, legislation crafted, by the way, by Republican Representative Trey Gowdy of South Carolina that rolls back a mid-1990s law that imposed a 10-year limit on Secret Service protection for former presidents. In other words, this new bill sees presidents protected for life, as well as their children up to age 16, with armed guards 24-7. It's the reimposition of the Praetorian Guard, my hmm. friend. Hail Caesar! Nice. To a uh, little bit of what uh, Red was just talking about. It's a mistaken notion in government that the interest of the majority is only to be consulted, since in society, every man has a right to everyone's assistance in the enjoyment and defense of his private property. Otherwise, the greater number may sell the lesser and divide their estates among themselves. And so, instead of a society... 
where all peaceable, peaceable men are protected, become a conspiracy of the many against the minority. With as much equity may one man wantonly dispose of all, and violence may be sanctified by mere power. In other words, he said the, the tyranny of the, of the majority is just as bad as one tyrant. Yeah. But we always hear, well, the, the majority of the people, blah, blah, blah. No, that was never mm-hmm. intended. So what you're saying basically is that the, the well, I don't know what you call it, a doctrine, the right to eminent domain, where the government can come in and declare your land public property hmm. and take it from you. It's been it's happened here. You know, okay, they have to compensate you for it, but they still take it. They still supposedly claim the right to steal it from yeah. you. And everybody talks about, well, it's a good, it's for the good of the whole. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the, the majority can be just as much role. of a tyrant as a single man can be a tyrant. I won't read a couple more here real quick. We know by infinite example and experience that men possessed of power, government, rather than part with it, will do anything, even the worst and the blackest, to keep it, and scarce ever any man upon earth, as long as he could carry everything his own way with it. This seems certain that the good of the world, of the people, was not one of their motives either for continuing in power or for quitting it. It is the nature of power to be ever encroaching. That's why we talk about the... uh, the fallacy of limited government. It's the nature of power to be ever encroaching and converting ever every extraordinary power granted at particular times and upon particular occasions into an ordinary power to be used at all times when there is no occasion nor does it ever willingly part with any advantage. Tyrants want more. Tyrants reduce mankind to the condition of brutes and make that reason which God gave them, useless to them. They deprive them of the blessings of nature, starve them in the midst of plenty, and frustrate the natural bounty of the earth to men, so that nature smiles in vain where tyranny frowns. The very hands of men given them by nature for their support are turned by tyrants into the instruments of their misery, taxation, by being employed in vile drudgeries or destructive wars to gratify the lust and vanity of their execrable lords. Tyrants are supported by general ruin. They live by the destruction of mankind. And as fraud and villainy and every species of violence and cruelty are the props of their throne, so they measure their own happiness and security and strength by the misery and weakness of their people. That wealth was dispersed among their subjects and circulated in trade and commerce would employ, increase, and enrich them. Is barbarously robbed from the people and engrossed by these their oppressors. Alas, power encroaches daily upon liberty, with a success to with a success that is too evident, and the balance between them is almost lost. Tyranny has engrossed almost the whole earth, and striking at mankind root and branch, makes the world a slaughterhouse, and will certainly go on to destroy it, till it has either destroyed itself, or which is most likely, has left nothing else to destroy. Cato letters. 458-TALK is the number. Josh, all four of our lines are on hold Let's right now. Let's do this. Good morning, caller. Welcome to the Patriots Lament. Who's this? Uh, is this me? It might be you. It depends on who it is. Uh, my name's Gerald. I'm sorry, Gerald. It's not you. I'm, actually, I'm joking. Yes, go ahead. What's on your mind? Uh, yeah, I'm an ex-felon, and I wanted to offer some commentary on Schaefer Cox from that perspective, if I may. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I really feel sorry for the guy. I mean, I'm agnostic and on the left politically, and I've got nothing in common with them, but I know that once the Department of Corrections gets a hold of you, they can do anything they want to to you. They can they, they can get you raped. They can get you killed. Uh, he's high profile, and so that offers him some protection from that sort of thing, but I've seen it from my own experience again and again and again that players in our state of Alaska criminal justice system, if you threaten their egos... You know, they, they break the law whenever they want to. Uh, the public defenders are in on the joke, and it's it's just, I really feel sorry for the guy. I think once someone is crushed and broken and helpless, that uh, people should consider, you know, forgiving him or something. Well, I think that that extends all the way to the street. Um, say something the less than respectful to a officer of the law and see how you get treated. Yeah, just their uh, their power granted them by the state makes them above you, at least in their own mind. If you don't, if anybody would like to argue that, 
say something less than respectful to a guy in a uniform and see what happens to you. Well, I'd, I'd like to argue with that. If I may, it's not just so much that things will get bent against you. I mean, uh, I had a case in 85 in Anchorage, and when I was sentenced, the judge's commenting, comments at my sentencing, he said that I should have been born 100 years ago, and he started talking about Lewis and Clark, and uh, he said that I could camp out under a spruce tree for the rest of my life if I wanted to, but when I came into town, I couldn't get drunk, break other people's stuff. And then I had another case in 2004, and I was just completely railroaded. I mean, I got four years, and and I was innocent. And they just, you know, it's not just that they're going to be rude to you or, you know, put you in jail for trumped up. They can they can crush you like a dog. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> they they just break the law. I was transferred from Fairbanks Correctional Center to Anchorage in violation of a judge's order after I put in a grievance for staff misconduct in uh, Fairbanks Correctional Center hmm. and I ended up locked down 23 and a half hours a day with a, a real psychopath a serial killer and like I'm 50 years old it's hard to do hand to hand combat with 20 year olds and uh, the the state troopers went out and re-investigated my case underlined the re after I'm already in jail for 6 months and they lobbied people to put more charges on me and uh, 2 months stay in jail turned to into a three year stay in jail and they, they can they can get you killed. I'm not joking and, and like this Mr. Hillbilly guy who called in, all I wanna say is just be careful about what you say and be careful what you do because they're not playing around. Yep. So did you said a minute ago that you have you listened to this show much? Yeah, and we disagree about a lot of things, okay. but I think you gentlemen are making an honest effort to sort things out. Thanks. Thank you. I was just curious about that. Appreciate the phone All right. Call. Well, thank you for letting me uh, rant a little bit here. Yeah, gentlemen. call any time. Absolutely. 458-TALK is the number. Shall we go on? Yeah. Good morning. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? This is Alan. Am I on? Alan, yeah. you are on. Go ahead. Um, I am a, a combat vet, and I have been raised with PTSD um, by the Department of VA. And that was actually... Um, a suggestion by the state. Um, they didn't. They wanted to remind me that the military and civilians don't play the same, and and they suggested that I go in and talk to someone at VA, and I did. Wound up with a, a rating for PTSD, and to paint with such a broad brush um, is kind of allowing a, a motion to rule reason. And when we have a president and a government that's selling arms to the cartel members and things like that, it makes me question if they can make a broad statement about combat vets and PTSD, then I look back at them and I say, well, you're selling arms to um, cartel members and things like that. What is your mental state? What what Mm -hmm. mental base are you coming from? And so when you come for my arms, it's just like when we were in the Army and we, we were given an order and you questioned it. Um, if it was wrong or improper, I wouldn't treat my soldiers that way, and we would have a talk. And there's a lot of times you go talk to a first sergeant about, you know, this is just not right, we're not going to do it, and we'd have a conversation about it. But now we have a government where emotions rule ruling reason. So come on and get them, you know, um, because our government is making decisions that are improper, and... Yeah. I've, I've got to I've got to flip it flip it around on them and say if you're willing to to do what you want to do um, with um, our Libyan friends and the drug cartels and, and with your how you're affecting uh, gun transactions then I can't agree with your PTSD diagnosis. Yeah, or what they're arming uh, Al Qaeda in Syria. They know for a okay. fact that they're giving arms to Al Qaeda in Syria. That's right. So if you can if you can do that, it's just like saying. You know, you're not going to give, um, I don't think that if a person has PTSD that they're classified as the same people who are in Aurora, uh, Colorado, or out on the East Coast doing these heinous crimes. It's not the same. Well, exactly how many veterans with PTSD have gone out and killed a bunch of people? Very few. And the thing is, is that most of the veterans with PTSD check themselves more often and mm-hmm. correct, correct themselves on if not a day-by-day basis, mm-hmm. almost an hourly basis, to make sure that they're interacting 
um, within the quote unquote social norms. And, you know, who do you want on your side? And the other thing is, is if you do a four year stint in the Army, you have four years of inactive reserve duty. So what happens if a, if a vet comes out of the Army, has four years left of inactive reserve, is diagnosed with PTSD, are they going to allow him back if, if he has to be recalled? Well, here's the interesting thing is if you started asking how many guys have been diagnosed with that, yeah. it's almost all of them. Almost all. And I think, yeah. I mean, it's not too big of a stretch to wonder why they would want to disarm any and all veterans. But the thing is, is you get more money. It's, uh, you, you get benefits for having that. And so mm -hmm. they diagnosed everybody with it. It's basically well, your way to get money once you're out. I'm not saying that it's not warranted. Don't Don't get me wrong. But if you're having the option to get diagnosed with it, you know you're going to get benefits. I mean, you get out of the military, well, if you can get out disabled, you get paid forever. Mm -hmm. the other and that... almost everyone I've talked to has been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. And I mean, none of them say no because well, they're going to get paid forever. And it's not just the pay, Aaron. I mean, you, you look at how many of these guys that I know that... St I mean, I, I got back from Bosnia in 1997. I still don't sleep more than four hours at a time. But the other thing that has to be taken into consideration is that, like, in my case, I I went because that was part of my, you know, get out of jail free card, was go in and talk to somebody, and, right. and, and I did, and I got on the books. The other thing is that, you know, it, you are correct. A certain rating does equal uh, monetary gain, but you can also have a zero rating, which is also a, it's a rating. You don't get any money for it, but you, you still are you're still it, on the books, yeah? Absolutely. So when you go into your favorite gun store or wherever and you're filling out forms, if that's a, a, a law, you do have, you are rated. A zero is a rating. And maybe you don't want the monetary gain because it bothers you, just like it bothers me. So I didn't take the, uh, the, um, the compensation. But I, I still have that you know, with VA, so what's going to happen? But then you go back to your military orders of, is this a uh, just and lawful order? Mm -hmm. Well, I have to look at my commander-in-chief and say, you and your subordinates are making goofy decisions concerning firearms. You're not going to pay me with the same brush. So, In um, uh, last September, the Department of Veterans Affairs stated between October 1st of 2001 and June 30th of 2012, an estimated 247,243 veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan were coded with PTSD. And this a, quarter, story, a quarter of a million troops. A quarter of a million troops. And this thing, it was Tom Coburn when they were debating the National Defense Authorization Act of 2013. Coburn definitely... Or was basically saying that these troops ought to at least have their day in court. You can't just strip them of their gun rights because the VA says that they're mentally incompetent or whatever. And then Chuck Schumer fought against it, and ultimately he won the day. Oh, good old Chuck. Well, well, when Chuck Schumer gets out and gets in his limo and he's got four guys with mm -hmm. whatever they have there, you know, MP5s and everything that they've got to protect good old Chuck while he gets home, sure. that's about all well and good. And he says, this, this is Schumer's uh, quote. He says, I love our veterans. I vote for them all the time. They defend us. But if you are mentally ill, whether you are a veteran or not, it's just the same as if you're a felon. And if you're a veteran or not, if you're a veteran or not, you have been judged to be mentally infirm and you should not have a gun. And this thing goes on to tell a little bit more about some of the laws that he got passed in 2007. Well, the one thing I can tell Chuck is is that you take my case of PTSD, just like my lack of sleeping. It has to do with my being stuck in a minefield, my my being stuck in a combat situation with a weapon, but I have the wrong magazines and the wrong ammo. That has nothing to do with my having a desire to go out and act irrational with a firearm and shoot people or be offensive against someone from the state. This... So, 
you know, it's, it's not from drug abuse or anything like that, and it's not from um, hearing little voices while I'm going to the post office. It was because you were serving your country. We are up against the break. Thank you very much for the phone call. 458-TALK is the number. You've got it on Patriots Lament right here on KFAR Local Talk Radio. And welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. It's Local Talk Radio, but we're streaming live around the world at KFAR660.com. And you can also find us on your smartphone with the free TuneIn Radio app. Check that out today. Uh, Josh Bennett, Aaron Bennett in the studio. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. All right, we've got all, all four lines I wanted hold. to hit something up here really, really quick. with uh, Jonathan May, who was a Massachusetts minister, in uh, 1750, he delivered his most famous political speech, which was a discourse concerning unlimited submission and non-resistance to the higher powers. Okay, this is a sermon in his in his church to his congregation. And this sermon was often called the warning gun of the American Revolution. And Mayhew says that Mayhew, yeah, dictates... Reason dictates the usefulness of obedience to government for social protection, but when government becomes oppressive, when it robs and ruins the public, then they immediately cease to be the ordinance and ministers of God, and no more deserve that glorious character than common pirates or highwaymen. Rulers have no authority from God to do mischief, and the citizens have the right to disobey unlawful authority, and in cases of very great and general oppression, to vindicate their natural and legal rights, to break the yoke of tyranny, and free themselves and posterity from inglorious servitude and ruin. And to the caller that we just had when we were talking about the National Defense Authorization Act, right now, with another act that Schumer passed in 2007, All right, thanks. A, when a veteran is declared with incompetent or in, um, PTSD, the VA automatically enters the name of those veterans in the National Instant Criminal Background Check System, which will prohibit them from buying or owning firearms. They tried to pass a Veterans Second Amendment Protection Act a year ago, but it was shot down. No, is that? I'm, I'm curious. Is that for any rating of PTSD, or is it only if you've been uh, diagnosed as being incompetent because of PTSD? Coded with potential PTSD. <laughs> wow. you know, well, you think about how many veterans that even I personally know who have a rating of PTSD, whether it's a, even down to a 0%, uh, and how many of them have concealed carry permits actually issued by the state of Alaska. You think about the ramifications for this, because now none of the concealed carry permits are, are NICS exempt anymore, which means that every time you go in to buy a firearm, you still have to go through the background check. If the background check now says, no, sorry, you can't sell this guy a firearm because he's coded. Yeah, well, I, I, I hardly know a single vet that does, hasn't been... Uh, well, we just said they said that in the last 10 years or 12 years, a quarter of a million of them have been found to be PTSD. Well, you've read, we've seen things before where Homeland Security says that potential terrorists are returning soldiers. Yep, yep, that's uh, that's been reflected more than once. Um, They've said that several times. I'm starting to agree with Bill Fulton, I think. The thing to do is just to hunker down and be on their side. Yep. Yes. Turn in, turn in all your neighbors. You want to be on the winning side. Mm. I love this Schumer guy. He votes for these wars to send guys over there and says that he loves them. I vote for him all the time. And then he says, if you're mentally ill, whether you're a veteran or not, just like you're a felon if you're a veteran uh, or not. You've think been judged about think about this for just a second. A you're telling somebody, 18, 19 years old, you're giving them an order: go kill people, go, go destroy the infrastructure of another country. You think that's not going to mess with their head? Of course it is. You think they're not going to have some sleepless nights when they come back, and then they're, they're having trouble sleeping, their, their sergeant says, what's wrong with you? You're not sleeping good at night because you've killed people? Yeah, go go been, get some counseling for it. I think the issue more, though, it always seems to be underlying in all actions that the state does to ensure its continuity, is those guys coming back highly trained. They don't want them to have guns. The state doesn't want them to have guns. And can you blame them? No. Of course not. 
if you have a state that ultimately wants to disarm its people, and they do, I mean, I'm not going to quote it word for word, but we started the show out with the kids' quotes. John Locke's quote of one of the legislators passed laws to against the rights and property of the people. They've declared war against the people. I've got two breaking news things that have popped up here since we've been on the air today. Uh, you know those peti- those petitions that everybody was signing mm-hmm. for secession? Uh, the White House has responded to the secession petitions and has denied them. What? No, yeah, you do not have the right to secede. All of those uh, petitions from all the different states. No, the president says no. Oh, man, that sucks for all those I states. I thought he was going to... He's called for unity instead. Oh, of course. The and, majority of unity. By the way, both um, Maryland and Pennsylvania have now started using a computer algorithm that predicts future crimes. Nice. So if you've seen Minority Report, those or of us who have been, you know, things like you know, that. they've been saying, well, we've been saying for a while that we're, you know, you get people thrown in jail already for a potential crime. Now they're actually using this Didn't algorithm. Didn't Schaefer go to jail for a potential crime? No, no, he committed the crime of talking about killing someone. But yeah, they were going to jail fake for people. He didn't crime. actually kill anybody. They were fake people too. But for, that doesn't matter. They were fake for, people for, that worked for the state. No, no, you, you, keep, you keep saying you keep it, saying that there there is a list out there that he had of actual real people, and that's the that's the thing that that's really not got what him. he got prosecuted. But that's not on, what he got Steve. convicted that's of. That's the point. He got convicted of killing people that worked for the state that didn't exist. And I do think it's because they potentially in their make believe world could have worked for the state. Either way, we've now got this. I mean, we have got minority report. Live and well here in these United States of ours. You know, I keep wondering every time we bash on the state. I just wonder if I want to move out, and sometimes it's like, no, nah, stay here. It's not that bad. And then I listen to the radio or read these things about Fulton, and all the comments are, yeah, he's a leftist instead of mm-hmm. the obvious. No, it was he was working for the FBI. That was the wrong thing that he was doing. Well, lying. That's the greatest thing about it is all the things like this. Uh, post-traumatic stress. If we just get a Republican in, everything will be okay. It, you know that's it's, what's going to happen it, in the three, NDAA three and some, It was a Republican right, that made this. Three and a half something mm-hmm. years, people will forget all of this stuff while they're trying to get in a Republican. Oh, yeah. And when they get one and he doesn't repeal anything. Let's oh, take boy. calls. 458 talk is the number. Good morning. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's all this? Gone. No, we got one still. Oh. Uh oh. Hello? Hello? Hey, who is this? <laughs> I don't know. I give you guys so many different names. Um, mm-hmm. we're Any, Joe today. Joe is fine. All right, go ahead. What's on your mind, Joe? Hey, um, just a couple of quick questions and uh, question or comment. But um, uh, do you guys still get together? And you, at one time, um, I haven't heard you say anything, so I'm guessing not, but get together read or study some books and materials um, like you used to long ago. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? Yeah, uh, I think uh, Natalie Howard's group still gets together with the books. And the yeah, that was, that was the uh, Campaign for Liberty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Every okay. other Friday, I think, or every other Tuesday. Yeah, I think Natalie Howard's the best person to contact. With. I think right now they're doing the uh, Rose Wilder Lane's book. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a good one. What was it called? Discovery of Freedom. Yeah. Yeah, they still do that. Um, uh, thanks, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll check into that more. And uh, I guess comment-wise, it's so crazy, but it it's almost as if we we definitely have enough... Um, uh, I'm not, I know I forgot how I was going to say it, but, but really the state of the union, the state of where we're at, uh, really we've got enough... Um, uh, I can't think of the right word to use. Evidence, enough slavery that really, it, you know, if the American people would wake up, that you, I mean, it's like, what, where do you draw the line and throw off the, the uh, tyrannical government and say enough's enough, we're not putting up with it anymore. And I think we've got enough evidence actually to do that long ago, but it's just like when you have a complacent public in a public that's, that, you know, 50, more than 50% are receiving handouts mm-hmm. from the government. Nobody has the um, will to do that anymore in an uneducated public who have no idea what freedom really is. Right. I think, and, I think Josh and I have um, yeah. pointed out the, the root cause, and it, it's not handouts. It's not all those things. It's seeing the state as legitimate. 
And we can make the argument for change any way that you want, but if you come out on the other side seeing the state as, as legitimate, you're going to come up with the same answer every single time. Look at how many people have said we need to get rid of the government, and then the first thing we need to do is institute a new government. And right. get, a, get a good leader in yeah. there to lead us. Yeah. Forgetting about that men are fallible, and why should one man lead another? Why right. should you even want that? All right. right. I, I don't... The, the issue isn't um, this battle of fighting for our rights against a tyrannical government. It's it's government in the first place. Right, and I agree. Correct. Yeah, there, there is no correction on it. We're not going to fix it. You were never going to fix it. Instituting it in the first place is the mistake. We we have we <laughs> read all the time. I mean, from the 1500s we've read stuff from the 1500s, 16th, 17th, 1800s to now different different authors who were really brilliant men and they point out the fact that the state will always end up what we have right now. It always wants more power. It has to feed itself. It has to grow just to stay alive. And it will. And the power never wants to be seated. They always want more power. So there's no fixing this because you still have to have it if you're just going to fix it. You know, it needs to cease to exist. You know what kills me is how many people that I know that, that would agree with what you just said, Josh but then turn right around and say we ought to pass a law to force people to do this or that. Or we should vote for this. Yeah. We should vote the, the, Voting political, is violence. Wheel, the political will to point the other way, this way or that. You'll make somebody do what you want them to do. And the ultimate point is we do it to ourselves. This yep. country, these people, us, <laughs> we've done it to ourselves because... The state cannot do anything without the will and the permission of the people. It cannot do nothing. it. Nothing. Right. There's nothing the state has done without our permission or allowing yeah. it to do it merely by complacency. But, I mean, we are the state's arms. We are, and I am actually saying we, I'm throwing myself in there, we are the state's legs. We are the state's executioner of its laws. We're the state's thoughts where the state's eyes where the state's mouth we do it and have done it to ourselves go all until the way. we want to stop that and take away our consent go all the way back to what timothy said the very first caller hillbilly in the last hour when he talked about wearing a color to show your solidarity with those who are not under the state to show to show your solidarity and to say i am a part of this revolution well the ultimate one would be yellow and black well, it's that, the Gadsden flag. <laughs> that would be... No, yellow and black. That's the anarchist. Yeah, yeah. Well. Gadsden flag, which I happen to have one. The yeah. only one I've ever seen, it was custom made. Thank you, Dave Giesel. Yellow and black. It's an anarchist. Yeah, no, Anar- anarcho capitalist I mean, ultimately, I, we don't, as you know, we don't believe in a state because there's no good state. There's no such thing as a good state. Right. Right, and even... that hey. that's That's the point I was trying to make, is at the very core of it... The, the person that wants liberty the most in this country still advocates for the state. Mm. They still do. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, hey, who was the, who was our forefather who said unless the people, um, uh, unless like a body of people or, or, or the uh, um, majority of people in a country remain somewhat righteous? John that, Adams, uh, moral, right. he's moral right. people. He didn't say right. righteous. Yeah. He said this country could only be for a moral people. A representative republic could only be for a moral people, and automatically he doomed it because especially people that get into power, they're not moral. They're not ethical. They prove that. I mean, we go back to Washington, and he was a great guy in some things, but he used federal troops against veterans right off the bat. John Adams, who said that about morality or a moral people, signed in the Alien and Sedition Act and threw people in jail who vocally spoke out against his presidency. I mean, it's been from day one. They proved that it could not work. And trying... I mean, look at what we have now. It's so And we've so spent the last huge. 300 years fighting to keep it down. And how'd that work out? Here's a, I've actually got two quotes on this same thing. First was John Adams where he said specifically that their Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. And Benjamin Franklin said that the right of self-government is reserved only for a virtuous people. 
everyone else basically needs a ruler. Yeah, and the, and the longer I live, the more I agree with those statements. And my last comment, I'll get the heck off the line, but um, about six months ago I ran across um, a, a teaching, it was a, a, a Christian um, rabbi, um, a rabbi, believer in Jesus, whatever. And uh, anyways, he has a, a totally crazy teaching. You guys might have heard of it. It's like called the Harbinger, and it's related to um, to uh, 911 and just... Um, God dealing with nations, and um, it's it's so wild and so um, just unbelievable that everybody should check it out. But um, but it's called the Harbinger. Um, there's a longer kind of subtitle, but I can't remember it right now. But um, but if you type the Harbinger in uh, in the internet, you'll you'll run across his book in his CD teaching. But anyways, that's all I have to say. And thank you very much for the show. Thanks for the Thanks. call. Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Randy. Randy, what's on your mind? I just wanted to let you know in today's paper uh, for Saturday, January twelfth, on B one, there's an article that says Bill would allow teachers to carry. HB fifty five would let school workers pack guns for defense use. And that seems like a good idea. Though I would recommend uh, my, my thoughts on it would be to make the parents and everybody feel comfortable is that there should be like two safes permanently mounted in the school, maybe one in the office and uh, one somewhere else in the school at the other end of the school or something. And uh, and there should be a gun in there with a trigger lock and a specially trained teacher who's got the concealed carry course and everything will have a key on his person to, when he gets the gun, he can unlock the trigger lock. And also when the door opens, it would send a signal to the police station that ought to make all the parents feel comfortable, you know, that the guns aren't a threat or anything, but so, yeah, get the guns in the in the schools. So wait, what basically you're saying, Randy, is that if they don't pass this law, the teacher really doesn't have the right to defend themselves with the other students, right? Well, I guess there must be some law that's, I don't know if, if it's, I, I, I didn't even know that they would need to pass Actually, Joe Nava pointed out on Thursday that right now, current Alaska law already permits that. Oh. It is the school district's policy uh-huh. which forbids country. it. Yeah. Huh. Uh, you know they got to be worried about what some of the liberal parents think about the uh, the teachers packing a, a gun in their classroom where their kid is and all that sort of little pub PR stuff. You know, so uh, one way or the other, we ought to get some, some guns in the schools. I think it'd just be better to so. ban public schools. I don't. Yeah, well, I don't think so at all. I mean, if there were no public schools, there could be no public school shootings, right? Bang. Or private school too. If you. Uh... If no, you, I think people have the right to. I would start argue or the same thing. I mean, private school. The same reason I would argue against arming the DOT guys. Yeah. You know, you have a guy that works out of the DOT right now that wears an empty holster around just because of the feeling of it. That's power. Yeah, when you give those. There's people... no gun in it, but he wears it anyway. And he wears a bulletproof vest. And he wears around an empty holster because of the power that he feels from doing it. That sounds like he's mentally disturbed. Uh, he actually failed his psych evaluation to be in the troopers, and so he ended up with that job. I love that. Ah, it's, it's wonderful to be protected by people. The state's when... got a place for everyone. Exactly. Sure Unless you're do. a veteran. Then they, they, well, I guess they do they have a place for you. It's in the mental world. Yeah. 458 Talk so is the number. When are we going to start number. getting rid of this problem? Have a solution to it. Uh, we need a final solution. We need a final right? solution. All right, good morning, caller. Who's this? Uh, that might be me. Yeah, I think it is you. What's your What's your first name? Oh, I'm Joe, too. Hey, Joe, too. What's hey, on your Joe? mind? How you doing, Maria? <laughs> hey, good. Hi, Aaron. Well, you said you needed a solution, so I called. We need a final solution. Oh, a final solution. Everybody's okay. got all kinds of... Well, I don't of... have any... Yeah. Go yeah, ahead. no, I don't have any. Um, oh, okay. Um, I was just calling to say thanks to everybody. Thanks to you guys. You're you're getting smarter and smarter every week somehow. Uh, are we great Americans? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maria. You're a great American. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I wanted to say about that agnostic ex-felon um i just wanted to be great you know just express my gratitude to him too uh there are a lot of <clears throat> christians and patriots and guys waving the gadsden flags and talking about the second amendment and how they're not going to, to let the government come and take their guns and <clears throat> 
excuse me. Um, anyway, what I see is, is what Hillbilly saw and seized. And that is, you know, if you're not to, prepared to do it right now, you're never going to do it. And that individual effort is going to be the thing that saves or helps or redeems you. Um, and so if you, if you're a, you know, if you want to defend the Second Amendment, you had the opportunity here to stand up and speak on behalf of Schaefer Cox. But if you wanted to go to ground and, and hide and, and not stand up and say, hey, this guy was, he was talking about something. He was, maybe he was looking for a fight with the government. But if you live here and you're, you were in, Involved in some of those meetings and, and you knew something and you didn't want to you wanted to distance yourself from Schaefer Cox because you're scared of the government you're also not going to stand up to them when they come to take your guns well it's way it's the guns have nothing to do with it it was way before Schaefer Cox it's way before the second amendment it's way before the Patriot Act we're we haven't stood up for anything ever. We sure, never have. The people you, never you're right, have. You're right. You're right, Josh. But what were you presented with? What came across your desk? And I don't mean you, Josh, but I just mean when we were during our lifetime, where did the opportunity come for us to stand up? I think it came. I think the Schaefer Cox deal is more about each one of us than it is about just that one guy. I think that it's very easy for the average American to tell himself that when the government finally crosses the line and walks up and opens their door and walks in and takes their gun, that that's the time that all these other transgresses that's happened on their life and liberty can be amended for. And that way they don't have to buck the system that is themselves. Yeah, there's... Uh... They can sit there and they can tell themselves that the system is okay the the state does have the right to do those things even if they don't like them as long as they don't cross that one final line that they can it's like pushing the interest off to our posterity Posterity. they can push the guns off they can never have to take a stand and we also have lost the reason we've argued this over and over people do not take the stand on anything because they feel that their stand is a ballot box and the government's done a great job with all their mouthpieces telling us forever that your stand is at the ballot box that your change the way to stand up for your rights well if you want to get that law changed you need to vote for the right person that has uh, nothing to do with it so we have become a complacent people because we think that somebody else that we vote for is going to protect us. I have to agree with Josh that uh, 9.9 out of 10 people that I talk to, at some point in the conversation, will make a claim. What, and I always like to cut people deep and tell them they don't do actually do anything. They actually promote the problem. They will all fall back on the claim that, well, they, they do vote. Always. They voted for something. Even if they've been listening to me for a couple of years and they know I'm going to tear that up, they'll still f- fall back there because that's the only thing they've effectively or, done. You know what? Some of them go even farther. They join organizations like the Interior Alaska Conservative Coalition. Or the teabag or Or the thingy. tax... What's that? ITA, Interior Taxpayers Association, where we decide to tell them how much they can tax us. <laughs> I don't know. There's We've... We failed ultimately. We're gonna pay for it. Thanks for the call, Maria. Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Good morning, Frank Journey. Hi, hey, Frank. Hey, Frank. Hey, uh, Maria. You're blessed, and uh, you know uh, this show. You're, you're lighting bushfires in my mind, and probably many others when it comes to freedom and liberty. I'd like to quote something from Daniel Webster, seventeen eighty two to eighteen fifty two. Hold on, my friends, to the Constitution and to the Republic for which it stands. Miracles do not cluster, and what has happened once in 6,000 years may not happen again. Hold on to the Constitution, for if the American Constitution should fail, there will be anarchy throughout the world. 
Amen to Daniel Webster. My gosh, he quoted that in the 1700 And look what's happening today to our country. Not only the rest of the world, but our elected officials are, I don't want to say no more. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Frank. I appreciate that. And we have got about a minute left here before we are done today. Uh, do we have an action point, Josh? Vote. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks, Aaron. No, people need to decide now if they are going to stand up for their rights. And do whatever you would do if they were coming. Kind of, go back to what Timothy said at the far. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far and say that, Steve. We really? only believe in defensive. When every single person you know's claim is to shoot them right in the mouth uh-huh. when they come walking through the door, and you tell them to go do what they're going to do now, you're basically telling everybody to go sh- shoot somebody. Unless they that's don't. Because everybody's uh-huh. lying in the sand is they're going to start shooting everybody. It's, but if you go, if you if you listen to what Timothy, what Hillbilly has said. He has never advocated for violence. He is telling people, you talk violence, you talk violence. Right, put, then, put up or shut then up. Put up or shut up, yeah. Well, I, I understand, put up or I understand shut up. that's we, what he means. We need to stand up for the veterans that have PTSD. Thank you. And say, you may not take their guns either. They'll divide and conquer. Exactly. Divide and conquer. They'll be after See, yours next. Them. That's right. You don't stand up for them, no one will stand up for you. Thanks for being here with us. You can find us online at patriotslament.blogspot.com. Yeah, or uh, on PatriotsToLament at gmail.com, email, and Radio Free Fairbanks on the YouTube channel. All right, we will see you next week right here on KFAR. Up next, it's Health Talk.